I think it's like a problem with the image of digital fabrication and digital design. It's, there's nothing fundamentally uh, alien or uh, that like it cannot use these things to address those problems. Uh, I mean, of course, like some of the problems are, it's the same, like if you think of it medicine wise, like, you know, places, some places in India or in Africa or whatever, what they need is like not the cutting edge medicine, what they need is penicillin. <laughs> Um, so some of it is just logistics, um, so we have to get that, so that's not a problem for, uh, that's a problem humanity has in, in some ways solved, like it's just not reaching the right people, like, uh, so it's a problem of logistics in that sense. On the other hand, like there's nothing that, at least I think that is alien or contradictory in digital design with uh, addressing problems of the masses. Uh, of course, you have to have like initially like maybe 10, 15 years of uh, suspension of disbelief, like because like architects have to be trained up and like engineers have to be trained up and like you know like knowledge has to be become available. Um, and now it is available and and um, so it it's. I don't think it is antithetical at all. Like it it. In fact, it's the opposite that the more knowledge is available, like the more people will use it to solve their um, uh, their issues. And so, in that sense, it's not it's not esoteric. Of course, like all all disciplines, there will be people operating at the bleeding edge, like, and they shouldn't be. I mean, uh, Einstein should should not worry about like the physics of like water drainage. You know, like is it, that's that's not what should happen. That's that's like the use uh, misuse of um, certain resources, um, which you know, which used to happen actually. Like that, people who are incapable of dealing with things were forced to do these military calculations, and so. I, so in that sense, I think like digital design has like a bad image that it is esoteric and but there's nothing esoteric about it like it like most of it is connecting back to knowledge uh, that is historically built up like so no. Profit or survival is like the main motivation why we continue to evolve and um, so I, I don't again I don't see it as like a oppositional thing that like somehow um, if you if you're motivated by profit you're not going to do anything useful for humanity or if you're solely motivated by being philanthropic that you're not interested in money like that I think they're not so oppositional and and the more interesting question in, in at any rate I think is how do you actually predict human behavior um, and and whether it's pro motivation is profit or motivation is philanthropy like to me is less interesting like if we could I think we should focus on like how we can predict what humanity is gonna do <laughs> um, and how they use uh, buildings rather than like we are not there yet like and <laughs> we can worry about whether uh, it's, it's, it's going to be misused or not at a later point like I, I think that it's a big open question as to can computers even come close to predicting what humans can do uh, there's no clear answer like at least as far as I know and like only in recent times have like this topic of consciousness like been kind of seriously scientifically picked up again. Um, philosophers like Daniel Dennett like are talking about uh, is consciousness like an evolutionary process between our neurons? Uh, 
They're like David Chalmers and others, and they're neuroscientists uh, trying to understand consciousness in some rudimentary scientific way. Um, and I think human behavior will be a similar frontier to be crossed. We can make some guesses as to like how people might behave in very contained situations like in office space, which is what Patrick's research is about. If if you have a regular schedule, like in you know office space or in you're in school or something, that's somewhat more predictable, at least as a starting point. Um, yeah, so I think like we should worry first about <laughs> predicting behavior, and then worry about like how whether it will be misused or used positively. And we should have faith in humanity that so far we have use most things most of the time for the benefit of humanity, otherwise we wouldn't be here. Um, of course, there will be like problematic phases, like we might use it for war and destroy ourselves. Like, but I think in good faith, like there's enough case for optimism. Like, like with everything else, I think the, the good outweighs the bad by a large margin. We definitely believe that because um, our, our main motivation in, in when studying or investigating computational processes in architectures is not to set it up as uh, oppositional to vernacular, it's to study uh, existing building traditions in a scientific way. So not everything that is traditional needs to have value, uh, not everything needs needs to um, uh, be uh, preserved, let's say. But there are, obviously, because it's evolutionary process, uh, there are things embedded in, in culture and in building traditions and in, um, in the way cultures have been building for uh, several centuries or even millennia that if we can study and understand them, um, why they work, uh, or what is the logic or rationale behind uh, those particular traditions, and that I think is more amenable to a computational way of working. Um, so we, in many ways we are always saying to connect back to a history, both contemporary history and also a historic, uh, a deeper history of building traditions and so on. Um, unlike modernism, which was clearly uh, oppositional to, to traditions. Um, we think we can connect back to a lot of knowledge that has been in many cultures um, and also in a human culture. Um, so we don't at all see it like oppositional. We, we definitely see it as something upgrading it, continuing the evolutionary process with the use of computers um, and digital fabrication methods and so on. Yeah.